This is Cheryl Fortune. Thank you for watching The Message of Hope TV. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Message of Hope. I am your host, Christina Lockett, and I am so excited and thrilled to have with us in the studio today a woman of God that is an author, she is a businesswoman, and she is just all around a wonderful person. Please welcome to the show, Ms. Kenyatta Loftus. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. You look gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you look gorgeous. And you know what? I have always been inspired by your smile. You have such a kind and sweet spirit. You know, we've been knowing each other for a couple of little years now. Yes. You know, but you're doing some great new and awesome things. And we want to just start off telling everyone about your book, The Secrets of the Carter House. The Secrets of Carter House. Well, first, before I talk about the book, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here. Yes. I'm very excited. But more importantly, thank you for letting me be your Facebook friend. <laughs> uh, message of Hope is so inspiring, and it catches you on the right day with exactly the message that you need. Oh, so thank you. I just want to say thank you for allowing God to use you and to, to use the platform to bring people closer to Him. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And for those who do, uh, do not follow me on social media, please follow me on social media. You know, on that note, um, I've had people to assist me and just kind of help me with the ministry. And, um, you know, just kind of make my load a little lighter. But I told him, I said, my social media post, you can't do it. Uh, you know, because it's like no one can do it for me. Yeah. It's really God-inspired. And, you know, you can't do it for me. I have to hear from God, and then I post it. Yes. And that's why it's on time. It's on time. You know, and right, um, message. right message, right when you need it. So, again, I just want to encourage you, follow me on social media media and um and then there's sometimes where i won't post anything because i'm not really feeling so inspired but as soon as i am i i hit it but i'm glad that you are touched and i pray that everyone else is touched you know join like follow her <laughs> <laughs> thank you so the secrets of carter house is a story about um three successful women who are um faced with a challenge at the onset of hurricane ike they're okay. educators they're friends and the um, coming of the storm makes them rethink family, friendship, and faith. Um, the central character is Stacy Allen. And Stacy's story is kind of an allegory of Christianity. She has everything going on. She is successful. She has a great marriage. She is um, a brilliant person, brilliant scholar. Um, but she's still faced, she's plagued with insecurity, jealousy, mm -hmm. and uncertainty. And um, when the storm strikes, she learns things about her family and her family legacy uh, and about her friendships and her career that make her understand better that she has everything she needs mm -hmm. and how to move forward in that, um, in that confidence. So when she gains the clarity of understanding her heritage and her legacy, she is able to, to breathe into mm -hmm. all of that greatness that she already is, but then it's just not forced. It's, it's there. She's just it's there happy with it she's able to be on purpose with joy so. you know that is so insightful because people really experience things like that mm -hmm. you know on the outside people are like oh you got it all yeah. you have everything and not knowing you're suffering with some type of insecurities not feeling as confident like you said so how did you um really put your thoughts together to write something like this. Yeah, I started out wanting to tell a story about education. Uh, I'm trained as an educator, um, and I studied education at the K through 12 level. I taught college a little bit, um, and I was interested in telling a story of how um, our identity shifts when we go inside and outside of educational spaces. Okay. And how sometimes there's this, we're building a gap but really, we're the same person. And so how do you, um, how does that distinction come about? Like, how do you become multiple identities in that same person? And how do you get back to being the one confident person? Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's this, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, like, how did you even think about that? Did you experience it? Yeah, I, yeah. So um, you'll see, uh, my author name on this book is Kenyatta V. Ellie Mae Loftus. So at home, I was Ellie Mae. I mean, at home, home, like my grandmother calls me. She says, who names her child Kenyatta? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, she's from Nacogdoches, um, outside of Nacogdoches, Texas, a place called Mount Enterprise. And uh, I needed, I needed a, a real name, so she called me Ellie Mae. Um, my parents named me Kenyatha Voshe, so when I was at school, I was Kenyatha. Um, at church and with people other than you know my really, really close family, I was Stash. Um, my father, when he found out my mother was pregnant, he was like, oh, that's my Stash. I was oh. his hidden secret. Right, so I had these three different personas kind okay. of in these different spaces, and there wasn't a particular reason in my mind when I was younger to take one into the other space, right? Mm -hmm. So Stash didn't need to be at school, and Ellie Mae didn't need to be at church, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, it was just I was using different sets of knowledge, different reference points. Um, and when I started thinking about studying education, trying to decide my career and what I wanted to be, I was like, I have three sets of friends. <laughs> I have and most of us do. Three worlds. Um, but I really like to be, like, I like all of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to be all of who I am wherever I am. Oh, And yes. um, so how do I, how do I put that together? How do I, how do I explain Stash without, you know, writing a dissertation about Stash? You know what I mean? Just how do I, how do I be all of myself? at the same time with different people. And I mean, you don't have to have everything about Ellie Mae. Yes. But you know, Ellie Mae likes to make biscuits, and so if, <laughs> <laughs> if it's the potluck at graduate school, I'm gonna bring the biscuits, right? Yes. So, you know, just I've had having that experience of trying to bridge those gaps, and then thinking about other friends and professionals I know where there's a distinct home identity and school identity, or work identity and home identity, uh, and um, knowing people who feel, like I said, others, who feel like they have to turn themselves on and off. Um, and that's so unsettling. And there's so much unrest. Not, there's not peace there. Mm -hmm. But also, the healing work that they do, the gift that they have, you only get a part of it. Mm. And um, the people I talk to, they, they want to share their whole gift. I mean, they're not trying to... Uh, cut off how they're blessing others, but they are in the process. So let me ask you this question. Do you feel like that's more of an African-American experience, or do you think other people sometimes feel that way? Yeah, I know um, that it is a very strong African-American experience, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think others feel that way, too. So I think of um, like white women who I went to graduate school with feeling like they have to be like non-gendered. In oh the yes, right. Yes. So, how do I make myself less of a woman yes. in this space? Yes. Or um, Asian Americans, like, how do I actually be my bring my Asian American self here without you stereotyping me as the you know brilliant mathematician or, or whatever the stereotypes? stereotypes yes. Are carrying, right. So That's how do a good I point. get to be the artsy, um, you know, Asian American person? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I see, um, you know, I've lived the experience as an African American woman, but mm -hmm. I see that over and over and over again. Black men, or men in general, how do I, I don't want to be macho all the time, but I feel like that's the identity I have to carry yes. when I, I'm in that space. And you know, I think we're, people struggle with having to be what others, um, what they think others expect them to be at a, a particular time. And there's, I think, a time when you decide, I'm just gonna be me. Mm -hmm. And all those around you just kind of fall in line because mm -hmm. that's who you brought to the table. Mm -hmm. Like when you bring you to the table, I mean, they didn't know that there was an other you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so having that, getting to that space, that centeredness, where you can say, "This is me. This is all." And of be me. comfortable. And be comfortable. It allows others to see you and decide. I mean, not everybody wants to be at the table with you. And it's but, okay. And it's okay, right? I don't want to be at the table table with you if you don't want, don't want to be here. You know, that's a really good point because I think that we have to learn and grow to be comfortable in the skin that we're in. Yeah. Okay, and as we grow and develop and mature, like you said, well, you, you you got your bachelor's degree. Well, then you go to graduate school. Well, that's developing you more and more and more, and you still have your home experience. But all of that together is you. Yeah. And I think that sometimes people do struggle with that in self-identity, you know, because it's like, who do I be? And like you said, bring it to the table. Who do I bring to the table? Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. That's really enlightening. And somebody watching right now, maybe that's your struggle. But you have to pray about it and ask God, who did you create me to be? Yes. 
Yeah. Who did you create me to be? And allow God to shape you, make you, and mold you. Yes. Glory to God. That is so insightful. It's so insightful. Um, I remember being in college and they taught us the word code switch. Mm -hmm. I was like, code switch? And the professor, of course, began to elaborate and give examples. And I'm like, oh, we do that all the time. Yes. You know, and I remember uh, being a cosmetologist. That's my first profession for those who don't know. So, of course, when I'm around other cosmetologists, there's the lingo, you know, there's the attitude. There's yes. That's the way we are yes. when we're all together, you know. But um, when you're around other professionals, you know, when I graduated um, and started teaching around the educational atmosphere, it's different, yes. you know. And then when I'm at home and I'm Chrissy, yes. you know, we hanging out, we're laughing, having fun. So it's like all those different facets of yourself. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I, I don't know how, but I've always embraced all of me. Mm -hmm. But I know and I understand that everybody doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was great for you to bring this up in the book. Yes. I, I really enjoyed writing the book. It was a um, it was a fun experience. It was a challenging experience, um, and I shared it with my close friends first. They better better read it, and um, they said, "Okay, I had to I had to put it down for a minute because I was too close to home." And so it was neat to kind of really tap into where people are emotionally, and then kind of at the end bring us to a different space. So. I, I was, I'm very, very grateful for having the opportunity to do that and the support of my family to take time to do it and do it at the level I want to. So what's next? What's next? Um, there's a character in The Secrets of Carter House called Miss Charla. Okay. She is a sassy Southern businesswoman. Okay. And um, you can you can hear her stilettos cleaning, you know, clicking on the wood when she walks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Miss Miss Charla of Carter House comes out next. So wow. We're hoping to have the draft done by December. Okay. Um, so you're looking to launch it next year. Yes. That's wonderful. Did you know that you would like writing like this? I have always written. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't think of it as a profession. Okay. You know, I just I'm an only child. Mm -hmm. I grew up really close to my cousin, so I kind of have a brother, but kind of, I'm also an only child. Okay. Um, and you have to find things to do. <laughs> and writing was one of them. Writing's one of them, and also if you're traveling with your parent, like pen and paper you can always have yes um so it's just something i've done it's something i've enjoyed and then when i reflect uh, on conversations i've had with others um it's something that people enjoy that i share with them and so sometimes my writing you say at work when i was writing a report they'd be like okay this is good and i'd write it in a kenyatha way okay. i would say and they'd be like this is wonderful. This is really fun to read. Can you please make it um, more professional? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I realized, okay, I you know I, I like to write reports. And I like technical writing, but what I what comes out of me first is um, kind of emotional and conversational. Mm -hmm. and so it's it's what I do. I'm a writer. And you've embraced that title. Yes. Yes. What else do you could uh, see yourself writing in the future? Um, do you see yourself writing different styles or sticking with one style? What else do you see yourself doing? Mm -hmm. So what's neat about um, the Carter House series, we call it the Carter House series, is that um, we're writing for multiple, we're using the same story to write for multiple audiences. So this book is a, a trade um, novel. We've created a um, textbook version of it. So it's an e-textbook. It's being used at a college campus in Texas. And it's being used to teach um, political science. And oh. the title of the class is When Disaster Strikes. And it looks at like policies um, and how they shape people's response to disaster um, using the case study of Hurricane Ike in Galveston with, with this fiction. And so <laughs> that was That really is so weird. amazing to me. That was really neat. That was, so here's the, that example of like how I be my, my whole self right in that moment so this is written where you could pick it up in a political science class and the political science students will know what's what's the politics in there um, we expanded the textbook so they can dive deeper and um, you could also use it in an African-American studies course or a sociology course 
um, a professional development course, teachers, education. So there are like links to um, other materials, some YouTube videos that are relevant. Um, and then we create a series of children's journals that pick a topic out of this book. And we have kids write about um, that topic. So the first one was, I am, therefore I will be, right? So I love it. 200 word, 50 if you're younger, to 200 word essay responding to I am, therefore I will be. And so we're really using these books to talk about education, faith, family, um, at multiple levels and kind of giving people what they need. I just love it. I'm in awe of that. I really didn't know. <laughs> I'm in awe of that because it's like you go to school, you study education, now you're using your gifts and talents and then tying in what you've learned in education. All of you. All of me. I love it. At the it. same time. <laughs> At the same time. Wow, you are inspiring me right now. You're giving me hope because that's my, my profession right now. I teach science um, and I write. I don't consider myself a writer though. <laughs> I have three books, but I don't I, I don't express myself as a writer to others because it's just really inspiration. And once the inspiration comes, I write it and then I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, like with you, I know you're probably constantly writing, you know, it's so it's a little different, yeah. you know, but I just love how you're incorporating all that is you, you know, that is so exciting. That's so interesting. And for someone that's watching right now, don't be afraid to use all your gifts and talents in your profession, yes. you know, because sometimes you feel like you have to choose. Yes. Do I just write and focus on my book and write more books? Or how can I incorporate everything that I've learned my entire experience, even what you already um, been able to teach before previously? You're co incorporating that into your textbooks and, and consulting. I'm sure you're consulting as well. Yes. God is good. Yeah. You, it, he is. <laughs> and I guess I, I don't want to take too much, too much or any. I, I don't want to take credit for it because that was, you know, there's a, I, I, I try to be this or that mm -hmm. or that, but that's not how he made me, right? So mm -hmm. that's just, um, he has given me that thing to do, mm -hmm. and I, I have to do it. You have to do it. Yes. You know, recently, um, the Lord had really pr pressed upon my heart to pray because my foundation is prayer. And I prayed um, through my Facebook page, and it was pressed on my, on my heart to pray for purpose. A lot of people are still struggling with their purpose. Yeah. Do you feel like now you really understand your purpose? You know, I don't I cannot articulate it in one sentence. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I, I'm doing it. Do that doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. Um, I, I need the like the catchphrase. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel like you're walking in it. Yeah. Yeah. I wow. How long did it take you to get into that space where you could feel like, well, I'm doing it? You know, it's interesting. I, I flow in and out of it. If, if I can be completely honest. Okay. Right? Um, there are. There is, when I know, like, I want to do this and I want to do that, I need to do this. Um, and over the years, I've said, you know, I want to write a book or I want to start a program or, or do this project. Um, but I didn't understand how they fit together. And there are moments when it's very clear how they fit together and that they're fitting together. And I'm, I'm walking in that. Mm -hmm. And then there are moments where I'm like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I'm grabbing the when I'm working frantically on a book cover, right? Like, really, is this what I Or should I be writing, you know, a, um, sorry, should I be writing a statistical report right now? Okay. And so, you know, there's a struggle of knowing that this is a part, all of me is a, is a part of the, the big picture. The big picture, okay. Um, what's helpful I mean, uh, is that I have a friend who I say these things to, and she's like, yes, last February, you had the same, <laughs> the same question. It's February again, and you know what you do in February? You tend to, you know, write statistical reports in February. You really enjoy doing art in June. You know what I mean? And so, kind of realize, keeping track of like, okay, I'm, I work like clockwork, and then all of these things come together. So your question was, when did I know? 
um, I know off and on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm glad you're being so open and transparent because I think sometimes when we are walking, walking in our purpose, we feel like, okay, God, am I still on the same path? Yeah. You know, you kind of lose your confidence, mm-hmm. you know. Is this where you want me to be? Am I doing the right thing? But it's good to be transparent and ask God those questions. Yes. And it's okay because he will tell you. And then sometimes it's not always so black and white. Yeah. yeah. And I think we want it to be because it makes us comfortable. Yes. But then if it's always in black and white, where's our faith? Exactly. Well, girl, exactly. you make me want to preach now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> It's not always black and white. It's not always black and white. And when you feel those gray areas or you feel those those moments where you're not so confident, it is okay to talk to him, pray to him, seek the direction. You know, and, and a lot of times too, God will have you going down a certain path, doing certain things, and you feel confident this your purpose. And before you know it, he may turn you just a little mm-hmm. bit. But that doesn't mean you're off track. Yeah. Exactly. It does not mean you're off track for someone watching right now. Maybe God is turning you a little bit. It's okay. Go with the flow. Yes. Trust him. Release your faith that, God, I give it all to you. If you want me to go this way, I'll go. If you want me to go this way, I'll go. And you have to really trust. Your faith has to be more confident in God and not in yourself. Yes. And you have to have a God connection yourself. Yes, God because connection. Because people outside I love that watching word. you don't. Well, don't get always get what you're doing mm-hmm. right and so they're like well I don't know why you would I don't know why you started that in the first place so yes really you know just stop <laughs> <laughs> come back to x or y or z yes. however they yes. understood your whatever they understood your purpose to be or whatever they need they have for you in their life or you know however God brought you to them that's how they understand you and yes. you have to say you know I have to be who God created me to be mm-hmm. um and it's okay if you don't understand that because I don't always understand it. Yes. Um, but I do know um, that when he says go, I need to go. And if he says stop, I need to stop. Um, and But you have to be strong and secure in your connection to him. I love that word. I, I interrupted you because I love that word, a God connection. Yeah. You have to have that God connection. I love the point that you made as well that everyone else won't understand. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was living in Louisiana, um, I went through a divorce, and um, I decided to go to college. Now, I go back. That was my first time in college. I decided to go to college, and so um, I was going through a program that pretty much paid for me to go to college. They also assisted me to make sure um, that my sons were taken care of, and my neighbor, she was so good to me. Um, Her and her husband would take care of my children while I went to college, because college wasn't close by. So pretty much everything was taken care of. I had my business. Again, cosmetology is my first profession. So um, I had my business on the side. I worked full time as a teacher's aide. And I went to college full time. But I had the support system. And financially, it was taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I had a home that I owned acre and a half of land so to everyone on the outside looking in like oh, okay i see she's busy but it looks like everything's taken care of it's going well and midway through god told me to go back home which my home is houston texas and so people were like well you're so close to graduating why don't you just stay there but i'm like no he said no it's time to go yeah i was there for seven years he said now it's time and so people on the outside are like mm, that don't make sense you got this program praying for you to go to college they take care of your children. You got this, you got that, you got a successful business. I'm okay. I start all over. And I came back, I moved back home and pretty much uh, finished college. My credits transferred, because mm-hmm. that was another question. Well, are your credits on everything transferred? I graduated on time, you know, and everything continued to work out the way God wanted it to work out. And I'm sharing that portion of my testimony because for someone listening and, and watching us right now, you have to have that God connection because others will not always understand. And sometimes they will talk you out of what God is saying to do. Yes. Because he knows the ending from the beginning. He knows how it's going to turn out. You know, and this was the season for me to return back to Houston. I've been here now since really seven years, since 2010, back home. And so I, you got me excited when you make that point. I love that word of God, connection. Mm, wonderful you know we have a few minutes left on the uh, television broadcast and I would love for you to look into the camera and encourage someone um, that may have some some 
identity issues or maybe feeling like they have to choose which person they bring to the table. You know I'm going to be using it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just whatever is on your heart. I would love for you to just share for some with someone that's watching right now. I just need to rid myself of the pressure to be someone that you did not create. Lord, take from me all the pressure to be someone that the world has made and that's uh jonathan mm -hmm. McReynolds. yes and that's the that's the central message um that i have for you just pray to god like allow me to be comfortable being me uh, allow me to focus on you and just be and then please give me support the right support so that I can move forward um, in confidence, on purpose, um, into where you would have me to be in a joyful place. Glory to God. That's it. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I just pray that the Lord bless you mightily. I pray that the Lord would inspire you and give you hope today. Um, I really had no idea that the Lord would lead the conversation in this way. But one thing that I do before the broadcast um, before we record is I always pray I always pray and so this is a God led show and we want you to receive a message of hope and so everything is said and done to inspire you and to give you hope hallelujah Amen. glory to God I would definitely love for you to share with everyone how they can support you contact you um, of course maybe book signings things of that nature and of course uh, be able to get a copy of the secrets of the Carter House Yes, so fine. You can find the Secrets of Carter House at www.secretsofcarterhouse.com. I am on Facebook as Kenyatha Loftus. That's K E N Y A T H A L O F T I S. And if you're having trouble finding me, I think you can ask Christina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, connect with me. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a guest today. You have such a beautiful spirit, and I've always felt that about you. And I can really see how the Lord is uh, enlarging your territory. Yes, I can see that. That's wonderful. I can't wait to see what's next. I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get that feeling sometimes? Yeah. Like, okay, God, what's next? What's next? And you're excited about it. And then when you see it, you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> Like, I was there, but, like, he did that. Like he, he did it. Together. You it's know, amazing. I always have that thought. Like, he did it again. Yeah. He did it again. And it's so funny. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, meet with a minister who had the gift of prophecy. And he actually used those words. He said, Christina, I see you all the time. And you say, God did it again. And it blew me away because those are my words and, and my thoughts. So I knew it was God speaking through him. He did it again. He did it again. God is real today, people. And I really want you to know that. And I just can't say thank you enough for watching A Message of Hope. Again, follow me on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. We're everywhere. Google Plus, uh, follow us. And again, you can always go to my website at www.christinalockett.com. We pray that your soul was inspired. God bless you.